Well, good morning, everyone. Safety Week in construction, so we're going to talk about fall protection this morning. Uh, before we get into some of this stuff, I'm going to focus mostly on the trauma straps and the suspension trauma, how to avoid it. But what are the basics for fall protection? Much better. All right, ABCs, right? What does A stand for? Wrong trade. Come on, guys. How many of you guys have been in the business for a while? How long? How about anchor? We're talking about fall protection. A, B, C. Anchor. Body harness. What's C? Oh, my God. <laughs> Tough crowd. Connector. Okay. How many of you guys actually have to wear fall protection on a regular basis here? All right, All right. All right. How many roofers? Show of hands. Three, four, okay, we'll go with that. All right, so apparently we don't know too much about fall protection, so we're gonna cover some basics. What is it? There we go, body harness. Who knows how to put this on? Come on up. One, you, you just been voluntold. Come on up. All right, so we're gonna demonstrate how to put this on. You know how to put it on? All right, while he's doing that, at what height do you have to have fall protection? Very good. What about scissor lifts and boom lifts? Always. Okay. Is he doing it right? So far? Yeah, he's tightening it up. So while he's finishing this up, he's tightening up his chest straps, the leg straps themselves, two to three fingers. If you could put your whole hand in there, it's too loose. If you can't put your hand in there at all, too tight. Turn around real quick. The attachment, the, the ring, where do we put this? Right, between your shoulder blades. He's a little low, right? Okay, so how do we fix that? We have to tighten up the straps a little bit, get that anchor up a little higher. Okay, we're getting there. While he's finishing this up, what is trauma suspension? Yeah, exactly. If you're hanging from the harness. Show of hands, how many have actually fell and been saved by fall protection gear. Okay, low numbers, that's what we want. But you're upright and walking. How did you get down? They let you down? Okay. There's a couple ways that we look at this. Number one, if you have to use fall protection, it is mandatory that you have a rescue plan. Have you guys ever drafted or written a rescue plan? I'm gonna go with no, it's not too common. The rescue plan has to be thought of ahead of time and always using 911 as your rescue plan is not acceptable. For you roofers especially, you're wearing these things full time. I would encourage you to look into the self rescue packs. These things are actually pretty cool. 50 feet or 100 feet, you fall off the edge of the building and you're still hanging there from 40 feet up, you pull this thing like a ripcord and it slowly lowers you to the ground. Yeah, pretty cool. What is this? Lanyard. When can you use this on a Clayco construction job site? Never, exactly. These are not allowed. What do I have here? Yo-yo, also called a connector. 
When you put on your harness and your connectors in the morning, do you inspect them? Oh, correct answer, always, yes. How do you inspect them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you pull it out nice and slow, and then also, when you're doing that, you're inspecting the actual fibers, and then check it like you would a seatbelt. Exactly, you gotta pull it, make sure it locks. If it doesn't, that thing needs to be taken out of commission. Oh, you're good? What's this one? Yeah, it's a leading edge yo-yo. Okay, for you roofers, that's what you should be using. The difference is on a typical yo-yo, where'd that thing go? Oh, okay. Who's got my yo-yo? Yeah, let me see that real quick. All right, so on the yo-yo, this is the part that gets attached. Turn around. Okay, now he can actually go and tie off somewhere. This one does not attach to the body. Okay, this attaches to the ground. We actually played a joke on a guy one time and made him put it on his back for five minutes. He wasn't too happy about it. Okay, all good? Oh yeah, you're even locking it, nice. All right, so how did he do? Yeah, he's good. Some of the things to look for when you're putting on here, these harnesses have to be taken out of commission if they've been used for a fall, if there's any rips, tears, frays, if there's any writing on those. If you guys have harnesses that have writing on those, those are actually illegal, you cannot do that. Also, some of the things you'll notice is there's the um, indicators, the impact indicators. So for anybody that's ever fallen in these, this little piece right here on either side is going to rip. Every piece of fall equipment is gonna have that same process. So with this, this is your impact indicator. So if you have one and this has been deployed, or if the stitching is not in place anymore, it needs to be thrown away, period. All right, good? Okay, he's good. I need another volunteer. Go ahead and take it off. It's for you. For volunteering. Chad, thanks, come on out, buddy. I get to pick on my guys. All right, Chad's gonna put that harness on and he's gonna, or actually I want you to put that one on. We're gonna have him demonstrate how to use the trauma straps. While he's putting that on, one other thing, how do you store your fall protection gear? Indoor, inside the Connex hanging. Inside the Connex hanging, uh, buckets, right? The last thing you want to do, and I see this all too often, is put your harness in the bottom of a gang box. Throw it in the back of your truck. We don't want to do that. What happens when we do stuff like that? Yeah, they get ripped, they get oil. Okay, you're destroying the integrity of that harness. Uh, our company, what we actually do is give them canvas bags. It goes in here, then it hangs up inside the Connex, period. That's the easiest and safest way to do it. You good? Okay. Oh, that was pretty quick. Does he have it on right? Perfect. All right. So, one of the things we'll notice, and a lot of the harnesses these days, come with integrated trauma straps, but these are actual aftermarket. They attach right to the harness itself. 
And just a quick explanation, you fall and you're hanging there and you're waiting to be rescued. Number one, how long do you have before you start getting into a medical emergency? Yeah, it, depending on the person, anywhere between three and 20 minutes. And what ends up happening is the lactic acid, blood clots, right? And then when you get released, all of that gets shooting up through your body. That could shut down your heart, your kidneys, your liver. Okay, that's why it's so important to make sure these victims, act, or the, anybody who's fallen, is actually rescued right away. The trauma relief straps do nothing more than allow you to extend that time. And we're gonna show how that works. But basically all you would have to do, unzip both of them, hook them together, and then stand in it and cinch it up. It takes all the pressure off your legs. So we're gonna have a little fun with Chad. You guys, you guys know what's coming. Cherry picker. Yeah, uh, we, we put them up on an engine hoist because doing this on the ground is easy. But when you're up there floating around and spinning, you're out of control, it's a little tougher. So I want to make sure Chad understands what it actually feels like up there. Jesus. I'm buying the electric one next time. <laughs> I mean, I don't have kids, but I'd like to, so take it easy. Is this just not going? Uh, I think we're having technical difficulties here. You want me to see it? Yeah, squat down. He broke my cherry picker. All right, so he's hanging. Go ahead and deploy those straps. You feeling the pressure in your legs? Yeah, he's already starting to feel it. Okay, now pull your knees up, pull that loose end up. And you could tighten it up a little bit more or you could stand even taller and take even more pressure off. Comfortable? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Okay, for some of you, this is payback. Watching the guy hang up there. But in all seriousness, you do not want to let them up there that long. How many people here know Chad? How many people do not like Chad? How many people have towels? It's time for target practice. There it is. I'm getting out of the way. Yeah, oh, here we go. All right, you're good. In all seriousness, what is the number one cause of fatalities on a construction site? Falls, correctly. Falls. You throwing them at me now? Falls make up 25% of the construction fatalities. So one of the things that we encourage is make sure when you get your harnesses that they are actually comfortable, fit, um, do not buy the cheap ones. They only last about five years to begin with. When you use the cheaper ones, who has to wear their harness all day? All day, yeah. What happens? I said sometimes. Yeah. If you're wearing these things all day, you learn real fast just how uncomfortable a cheap harness can be. So you want to make sure that you are actually getting a good harness, a good fit. We encourage our guys, and I would encourage everyone here, to have your own if possible. Not something that you would directly buy, but if your company issues them, keep it yourself. 
Our first volunteer that came up here was about 10 minutes for him to actually get fit into that thing. Okay, we don't want that. We want it fit for you, and then that is what you're going to continually wear. If you're constantly having to adjust these things, uh, it's taking up time, you're not gonna get it fit right, so make sure you have your own. If you don't have the trauma straps, I would encourage you guys to buy those as well. Guardian, 3M, Faltech, uh, they all make them. They're about 25 bucks for a pack. So that's $25 is actually gonna save you from a medical emergency. So who wears fall protection all day long? Who else? Yeah, where's your hard hat, buddy? All right. So as far as that goes, um, that is what we want to show you on the trauma straps. The leading edge yo-yos, uh, just in case you're unaware, they are much heavier. What is that made out of? Yeah, it's a steel braided cable. Can you use this for leading edge? No, why not? Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's the fiber on there. And when you go off of an edge, and if you're swinging, it's gonna cut right through that. You wanna make sure you have that steel cable. That's what's gonna protect you. All right, what questions do you guys have about fall protection? Weren't you at the last one over at Mesa 202? Okay. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, I would just, my last closing thoughts is make sure that you're wearing your fall protection, make sure it's fit properly. Odds are you're not the only one up there. There's someone else on your crew with you. Double check. Some of the hazards that come along with fall protection are not just the person wearing it, but who's under them. How do you prevent, or how do you protect people working below you? Two lanyards. Set of five, I think 20 bucks on Amazon. They're rated for 30 pounds. Okay, how much do you guys pay for your drills? Two, three hundred bucks? Right, even if you're in a boom lift or a scissor lift, I highly encourage you to use these because for 25, 30 bucks, you drop your drill, there goes 300. This is gonna be a lot cheaper, not to mention the fact you're not wasting any time. He got the right answer. Right, and that's the biggest thing, is you drop a drill and somebody's below you not wearing his hard hat, okay, he's gonna end up with one heck of a headache. We gotta protect those guys. What are some of the other things that you can do about the people below you? Nets, exactly, and I believe that's a Clayco standard, right? All baskets have to have nets around them to keep materials and tools from falling out. Everybody here is doing that, right? Caution tape, barricade the area off. Yeah, caution tape, barricade the area. Coordinate with the other trays. One of the things, and I, if, if you're not already looking at it, Clayco has their boards where they have their daily pre-task plans for every trade. Every trade can look at what someone else is doing. Make sure you're coordinating with other trades. For fall protection, you're not only protecting yourself, you have to protect those around you. If you see somebody doing something that's not safe at all, especially with fall protection, you need to say something. Okay, don't let it go unchecked. All right, no questions? All right. I'll turn it back over to Tracy.